Um, hi, I'm I'm Jean, and um, how can I per even perform if my brothers and sisters are as dumb as I am? Hi, um, what's your name, Jean? Um, I dropped out of my classes because of my failing grades. I see not a perfect. Hi, I'm Ira, and I'm one of the top students of the class. And I would like to say that I'm so lucky that my parents are very supportive and we have no problem with money. Plus, my parents are both intelligent and maybe the intelligence that I have are really in our bloodline. Hi, I'm Samantha and I just want to open something. Does this affect my grades? How can you be encouraged to study? The teachers po namin are of the terror type. They demand too much, yet they do not teach well. We don't understand what they are teaching, kahit na nag-discuss po sila dyan. And the worst thing is, wala naman kaming books for reference. Hi, I'm Jean. And how can I be motivated if what my parents want me to be not what I want to be. Hi, I'm Mara. I have to perform in class because my parents and teachers expect me to perform. My brothers and sisters are also performers in class. Kaya kahit na mahirap, kahit na pagod na ako, syempre, kailangan ko parin mo because of expectations. Um, nakakahaya naman kung hindi ako mag-perform. Motivation has been defined as a desire or a disposition to engage and persist in a task. According to Shank, Pintrich, and Miss 2014. When a student wants to read a history book on the Spanish colonial period, we can say that he or she is motivated to learn about Philippine history. The student may learn, however, of a TV program about his favorite singer and decided not to engage in reading the history book on that particular day. Motivation task refers to a state of being moved to do something, a movement that drives a person's behavior. Students without motivation feel no impetus or inspiration to learn a new behavior and will not engage in any learning activity. Educational researchers have long recognized the role of motivation in learning and have motivation. studied motivation from various perspectives. Their efforts have produced a rich foundation of motivation theories. Early motivation theories reflected the traditional behaviorism approach, an approach that considered the basis of motivation to be rewards and punishments. Other theories look at drives and needs. Over the last 30 years, however, researchers have studied motivation primarily from a social cognitive approach. This approach focuses on individuals' beliefs and contextual factors that influence motivation. So now, I will be showing the theories on factors affecting motivation. The first theory is attribution theory. This theory explains that we attribute our successes or failures or other events to several factors. For instance, you attribute your popularity to your popular parents or to your own sterling academic performance. Or you attribute the poor economic condition you are into the land reform of the Philippine government. For example, your land were subjected to land reform. According to Ormro 2004, these attributions differ from one another in three ways. The locus, ability, and controllability. Let's talk about first about the locus. Locus in English it's place. It's internal versus external. If the student raises his good grade to his ability and to his hard work, he attributes his good grades to internal factors. Your student, however, 
claims that his good grades is due to the effective teaching of his teacher or to the adequate library facilities, he attributes his good grades to factors external to himself. The second one is stability, stable versus unstable. If you attribute your poor performance to what you have inherited from your parents, then you are attributing the cause of your performance to something stable something that cannot change because it is in your genes if you attribute it to excessive watching of tv then you are claiming that your poor eyesight is caused by an unstable factor something that can change because you can prolong or shorten your period of watching television number three is controllability Controllable versus uncontrollable. If your student claims his poor academic performance is due to his teacher's ineffective teaching strategy, he attributes his poor performance to a factor beyond his control. If, however, your student admits that his poor class performance is due to his poor study habits and low motivation, he attributes the event to factors which are very much within his control. If your student attributes his or her success or failure to something within him or her and therefore is within his or her control or to something unstable and therefore can be changed, she or he is more likely to be motivated. If, however, your student raises his or her success to something outside him or her and therefore beyond his or her control, she or he is likely to be less motivated. They say that students are more likely to be intrinsically motivated when they believe they can be effective agents in reaching his or her goals. Examples that the results are not be determined by a top block. Motivation tends to increase when students attribute failure to lack of effort because effort can be controlled. It tends to decrease when students other with failure to until the uncontrollable cause, example, the love or ability if viewed as a stable. This is something interesting. People tend to attribute their success to internal factor causes, example, high ability and hard work, and their failures to external factors, the love, behaviors of others, and etc. According, that's according to March 1990. So when students do poorly, for example, they commonly attribute a failure to poor teaching, boring topics, um, poor tests, poor academic performance, it's everyone's fault except the student. The second theory is the self-efficacy theory. A sense of high self-efficacy means a high sense of competence. Self-efficacy is the belief that one has the necessary capabilities to perform a task, fulfill role expectations, or meet a challenging situation successfully. If your students believe that they have the ability to perform learning activities successfully, they are more likely to be intrinsically motivated to do such learning activities. The secret, therefore, to enhancing intrinsic motivation is enhancing our students' sense of self-efficacy. Social cognitive theories identify several self-efficacy enhancing strategies. 1. Make sure students master the basic skills. Mastery of the basic skills like reading, writing, arithmetic, will enable the child to tackle higher level activities. The move of the Department of Education to focus on the most essential learning competencies or the MELGs, it is COVID crisis supports students' mastery of the basic skills and so enhances students' sense of self-efficacy. Number two, help them 
make noticeable progress on difficult tasks. You like to give up uh, climbing a mountain when you feel that you are not making progress at all. When you have spent hours and hours on the difficulties and uh, using that to be progressing, you are made to uh, think that your efforts are leading you nowhere and you want to give up. It is good that you are helped to see progress while you are working on your difficult tasks. The knowledge that you are progressing inspires you to keep. Number three, communicate confidence in students' abilities through words and actions. Express confidence that your students, with all their abilities, can easily tackle the learning task. Words like, if you were able to do a more difficult task yesterday, what you're asked to do today is much easier than that yesterday. Needless to say that your body language and your words expressing your belief in their abilities must match. Number four, expose them to successful peers. Being with successful peers, students will inhale success and get energized to succeed as well. Success is infectious in the same way that failure is also contagious. Here are other recommendations from motivation theorists. Number one, provide competence promoting feedback. Communicate to your students that they can do the job. They have the ability to succeed. Number two, promote a mastery on challenging tasks. Don't give your students extremely difficult nor extremely easy tasks. If the task that you will give is uh, strongly easy, they do not get challenged and you do not grow the best for them. While if it is extremely difficult, they get frustrated. Then it is best to strike the golden mean between the two extremes. A challenging task is one that encourages students to stretch themselves to their limits. Next one is promote self-comparison rather than comparison with others. Desiderata says, if you compare yourself with others, you will become vain and bitter for always. There will be a greater and lesser person than yourself. After encouraging students to set their personal goals, ask them to evaluate their progress against their own goals. Make sure errors occur within an overall context of success. Arm Road 2004. There will always be errors or mistakes as we learn, as we go through. But this is to be mistakes once we learn from them. What if it is all errors that come one after another without a taste of success? Chances are your students will feel so dumb that they are robbed of the courage to proceed. According to Ortigas 1990, the learning process requires the challenge of new and different experiences, the trying of the unknown, and therefore necessarily must involve the making of mistakes. In order for people to learn, they need the opportunity to explore new situations and ideas without being penalized or punished for mistakes which are integral to the activity of learning. The next theory is the self-determination and self-regulation theories. A student's sense of self-determination is demonstrated in his capacity for self-regulation. Self-regulation refers to a person's ability to master himself. Students are intrinsically motivated when they have a sense of self-determination. When they believe that they have some choice and control regarding the things they do and the direction their lives takes. When we say self-regulation, he or she is the captain of his or her soul type of person. He or she is not a victim of circumstances. He or she is capable of directing himself. 
They are the abilities to set standards for oneself, monitor and evaluate one's own behavior against such standards, and impose consequences on one's successes or failures. Um, a student who is capable of self-regulation is more likely to be more intrinsically motivated because he sets his goals and standards, he monitors his programs and evaluates his own performance. A student who is capable of self-regulation is not only capable of regulating his behavior, but he is also capable of regulating his own learning. Ormrod 2004 types of the following process involved in self-regulated learning. One is goal setting. Self-regulated learners know what they want to accomplish when they read or study. Number two, planning. Self-regulated learners determine ahead of time how best to use the time they have available for learning. Number three, attention rule. Self-regulated learners try to focus their attention on the subject matter at hand and clear their minds of distracting thoughts and emotions. Number four, application of learning strategies. Self-regulated learners choose different learning strategies depending on the specific goal they want to accomplish. Number five, self-monitoring. Self-regulated learners continually monitor their progress towards their goals and they change their learning strategies or modify their goals if necessary. Six is self-evaluation. Self-regulated learners determine whether what they have learned is sufficient for the goals they have set. A student who has self-determination and self-regulation is are more likely to be intrinsically motivated and so is more capable of self-regulated learning. Here are some suggestions for motivation theories to enhance students' sense of self-determination about school, activities, and assignments. 1. Present rules and instructions in an informal manner rather than controlling manner. Here are some examples on how to present rules. Like, uh, we can make sure everyone has an equal chance to speak and be heard if you listen without interrupting. And if we raise our hands when we want to contribute to the discussion. Or like this one, I will be giving a particular format for them to follow when they will do their math homework. Then if they will use my given format, it will be easier for me to find the answers and to figure out how can I help them to improve. Number two, provide opportunities for students to make choices. Students will be more likely to be intrinsically motivated to attain the objective when they are given the freedom to choose how to attain it. Scores within the set parameters. Example is when we allow uh, our students to choose their manner of group representation to the class after the group activity. 3. Evaluate student performance in a non-controlling fashion. Practice of self-evaluation, especially with the use of scoring rubrics, will be of great help. Rewards for learning under means intrinsic motivation. Communicate evaluation results to inform your students of their progress without passing judgment of some sort, but to make them see that they are strong in some points but not so in other items. One next theory is the choice theory. It is a biological theory that suggests that we are born with specific needs that we are geneti genetically instructed to satisfy. All of our behavior represent our best attempt at any moment to satisfy our basic needs or genetic instructions. In addition to the physical need for survival, we have four basic psychological needs that must be satisfied to be emotionally healthy. Belonging or connecting, power or competence, freedom, 
and fun. According to Glasser, students are more likely to be intrinsically motivated when they are in a need-satisfying environment that responds to the need to belong, to have power, to have free choice, and to have fun. In addition, according to Maslow, need to satisfy hunger, thirst, and safety and security, um, need for self-esteem, and need for self-actualization. The longing or connecting motives motivates us to develop relationships and cooperate with others. Without the need for belonging and cooperating, we would only strive to be independent. The need for power is more than just a drive to dominate. Power is in true competence, achievement, and mastery. Our genetic instruction is to achieve mastery, new skills, and to be recognized for our accomplishments, and many more. As humans, we are also motivated to be free to choose. Having choices is part of what it means to be human and is one reason why uh, our species has been able to evolve, adopt, and thrive in this world. So what does this imply to our test to facilitate learning? We need to come up with a deep satisfying environment to motivate our students for learning. We should satisfy their need to belong, their need to be, have power by being competent. They need to have a free choice and the need to enjoy learning and have fun. So how can this be done? If we create a sense of community in the classroom and make every student feel she or he belongs to that classroom or community, classroom community, he or she will more likely to love to go to school. If we make use of cooperative learning structures, we strengthen the spirit of cooperation and collaboration and reduce, if not eliminate, the spirit of cutthroat competition. In a non-threatening atmosphere, students are more likely to perform. To, stu to satisfy our students' need for power, let us help them acquire it by making them achieve by making them master their lessons and they end up very competent. As a result of their competence and excellent achievement, they can recognize and experience genuine power. Let us teach our students that the source of authentic power is competence, not bullying and other irresponsible behaviors. This way, they will learn the true road to real power. To motivate students for learning, let us give them ample freedom to choose within parameters that are safe and responsible developmentally appropriate and supportive of learning for that is the ultimate purpose of freedom to help our students learn and grow into the responsible persons they are going to be when our students are made to feel that they have a lot of free choices they are driven to satisfy this need for freedom on the other hand uh, freedom on the other hand, when our students perceive themselves to be suffocated by our impulsions, positions, and limits, they are most likely to behave in ways, even irresponsible ways, to get them the freedom they believe is not satisfied. Developing the students a sense of ownership of their learning. Make students own their learning. Give them the opportunity to assess their own progress. Fun is a universal human motivator. If our students' need for fun is satisfied, they are most likely to learn much. A joyless classroom does not motivate students to perform. Let's have fun while we teach. Without our knowing, our students are learning and mastering what we are teaching while we are having fun. Let's now proceed to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. A student's lower order needs must first be met before she or he was for the satisfaction of his or her higher order needs. The lower order needs include first level needs and second level needs. 
The first level needs are basic survival and physiological needs for food, air, water, and sleep. The second level needs are bodily safety and economic security. There are three levels in the higher order needs. The first, which is now the three level in Maslow's needs hierarchy, is the need for love and belonging. The needs at the fourth level include those for esteem and status, including one's feelings of self-worth and of competence. The fifth level need is self-actualization, which means becoming all that one is capable of becoming, using one's skills to the fullest and stretching talents to the maximum. Based on Maslow's theory, a satisfied need is not a strong motivator but an unsatisfied need is. Research proves that unless the two lower order needs, physiological and security, are basically satisfied as our, our students in our teaching learning context will not be greatly concerned with higher order needs. Students are more likely to be intrinsically motivated when they are motivated toward escapes, mystery, mastery of a topic instead of just rote learning performance to get good grades. For us future teachers or teachers, this means that we cannot teach students with hungry stomachs. We cannot teach students when they feel afraid and insecure. While it is not our obligation to feed them, working with parents, the school nurse, and all others who can help can address a problem of students' hunger, lack of sleep, and the like. Our students' need for love and belonging is satisfied in a class where they feel they belong in, are satisfied or goodness of their academic standing in class, economic status, or ethnic background. The need for self-esteem is satisfied when we help them succeed, recognize their effort and contribution no matter how insignificant and praise their achievement. Doing so actually propels them to self-actualization. This theory is the goal theory. Learning goals versus performance goals. The goals we set for ourselves affect our level of motivation. There are several types of goals. In relation to learning, we can speak of learning goals and performance goals. Now, how do they differ? A learning goal is a desire to acquire the additional knowledge or master new skills, while a performance goal is uh, this or to look good and receive favorable judgments from others or else look bad and receive unfavorable judgments. These two types of goals, with which type of goal is the intrinsically motivated students occupied? Obviously, the ideal student is the student with a learning goal. The student with a learning goal is mastered focus, while the student with a performance goal is performance focused. Self-determined goals. These are personally relevant and self-determined goals and enhance a student's motivation. When lesson objectives are relevant to the life of students, then they turn out to be more motivated to learn. Where the lesson objectives are owned by the students because they find them relevant to their lives, most likely become highly motivated for learning. This departs from the contextualized teaching and happens when all we do is deposit information into the minds of our students. Students memorize and we withdraw what we taught every periodic examination. Goal setting. This is as a motivational tool. Goal setting is effective when the following major elements are present. Goal acceptance, specificity, challenge, performance monitoring and performance feedback. Our lesson objectives must be smart, specific, 
measurable, attainable, result-oriented, and time-bound, and challenging. It is equally important that we monitor our students' learning. However, simply monitoring results is not enough. How to give our students feedback about their performance. Motivation plays a key role in education. Students who are motivated are more likely to set goals and work toward achieving those goals. Students are more likely to have higher achievement and learn more when they are motivated. So as their teachers, we need to know our students and find out their hobbies, interests, and passion, passions. So we can begin to know those into our lesson topics, activities, and assessments in class. For instance, some of our students are active in sports, a few enjoy drawing, and some are engaged in technology. We could create a menu for an upcoming assessment. A menu of options for class activities allows us to talk into the student engagement and motivation for many students at one time. Menu choices in this instance could include students showing what they have learned by creating a short video or class presentation, an opportunity to create a poster, infographic, or brochure that depicts what they have learned, or the chance to create an animated video or slideshow presenting the information learned they learned in our class. Creating a rubric for students ahead of time, indicating the requirements that need to be included for whichever project is chosen, is a great way to set the expectations necessary for the students' degree. So, rubrics is important. I learned also that students may be intrinsically and extrinsically motivated to do well in school. If they are intrinsically motivated, they have an internal desire to learn something and are not learning is for a reward of any kind. Extrinsically motivated students are motivated to learn by an outsider reward. This may be praise, allowance, gifts, and etc. So if those outside factors be begun, so they will be less be motivated. So let us remember that motivation and student engagement go hand in hand. A student who is engaged in what they are learning is motivated to learn. And a student who is motivated is um, going to be engaged in learning. So, engaging and motivating learners can be challenging considering all classrooms are filled with students who have a wide variety of interests and abilities. It requires much effort and creativity from us teachers. As teachers. So, students who are motivated in their learning are going to show characteristics of being goal-oriented and are likely to see more success and higher achievement. Motivated learners take responsibility and initiative, show curiosity and a willingness to try, put forth genuine effort and take pride in their work. Motivated learners are not going to give up after making a mistake, but instead learn from those mistakes and be more likely to try again. This is called having a growth mindset. We can motivate our students all by our own. Let's have partnership to their parents, counselors, school facilitators, facilitators, and all personnel that affecting their motivation. <laughs> Knowing that theory is affecting motivation to students, greatly help us future educators to manage our classroom to um, to plan and um, engage more effectively our students to our um, lesson objectives and to lead them their desired goal. And always remember, a happy classroom blooms productive students.